Hello everyone, this is Derek from Corax Training and today we're going to be talking about the platypus. So if you're not familiar, uh, Stealth Arms makes a gun called the platypus and it is essentially a 2011 style gun that takes Glock magazines. So all the double stack 1911 features you are familiar with um, but with the ubiquity of Glock mags. So why would you buy a gun like this? Well, that's a good question. Um, first, the 2011 scene has sort of exploded in the last couple of years. What was relatively a niche competition gun has uh, gone pretty mainstream, um, thanks to a handful of companies now making those guns. And so Stealth Arms is uh, jumping on board, but they did something a little different. Uh, they built theirs around what I think is unquestionably the most common, most reliable, and yet still least expensive uh, pistol magazine. So there are definitely uh, you know, pistol magazines out there that are just as reliable, um, but none of them are as common or as inexpensive as the Glock uh, 9mm pattern magazines. The other thing Stealth Arms is kind of famous for, which you may have noticed, is uh, this gun can get pretty crazy. So every single thing on this gun, to include the color of every single part, is customizable. Sort of infinitely customizable. Um, you could easily spend a couple of hours on the configurator thing on the website, uh, tricking this thing out, and that's exactly what I did. So if this color scheme uh, is is offensive to you, that that's kind of the point. So I hope you dig it. Um, so I have some experience with 2011s, primarily with the Staccatos. This is a Staccato XL that I use in two gun. Um, again, very similar gun, very similar feature set, except that this gun uses uh, 2011 magazines. Uh, for the record, I can buy about four of these for the price of one of these. So when I drop these in the dirt and mud, um, you know, makes baby Jesus cry, but if I drop a Glock mag in dirt or mud, I'll just throw it in my bag and grab another Glock mag. And so that kind of brings me to the point of um, why I bought the Platypus. It's primarily for two gun. As I said, I use my Staccato XL in two gun. Um, and when I'm shooting my AR, so if I have an AR or any sort of, you know, 5.56, five, 5.45, five, 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 whatever caliber rifle, and I have it set up on my belt, it's no real, it's not really a big deal if I use my MBX mags because they're different, you know, they're completely different magazines. So I'll run the Staccato, and um, so I, you know, I have my holster here, 2011 holster, ghost mags, and then I just run these tacos because again, the type of two gun I'm shooting, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of reloading your rifle so a simple pouch and I can run a second one if I need to but you know pistol mags rifle mags and you're good to go however what if I'm shooting two gun with my PCC so my JP5 which takes you guessed it Glock pattern magazines um, so that's really where I think the bonus or the benefit of the platypus comes into play. So now if I'm shooting two gun with my JP5, I can completely get rid of the tacos and any sort of traditional rifle pouches. And now with just three simple pistol pouches, I have a two gun setup. So if a competitor came up to me and just looked at this belt, they would think, oh, that's a, a belt for USPSA, just a handgun belt, right? Except, nope, this is actually my two-gun rig. And so between rifle and pistol, I can have three spare magazines and, you know, depending on the rules in the sport, I would probably just use these, one or two of the 33 round sticks, and then it just doesn't matter. Any magazine I grab, is good for either gun. That greatly simplifies belt logistics. It removes a lot of excess weight off your belt because again, the type of two gun I shoot, 
you're not doing a ton of reloading. And so even just having one spare mag for either your rifle or your pistol is usually enough. And so again, I can just eliminate all that extra weight and space on my belt. So that's sort of the reason behind it onto the actual platypus itself. I have to say, um, the prices on these are pretty variable because there's so many options, but this is just about as optioned out as you can get. And it was a little under $2,000, which is a lot of money, but in the scheme of 2011s, it's not a lot of money at all. Um, the Staccato XL was almost double, not quite, but um, yeah, they're a lot more expensive with zero customization. So you see I have the Staccato set up with a TRL1HL and one of the Hollow Sun competitions. Uh, with the Platypus, it's the exact same light, um, but this one I went for the full-size EPS, mainly because it's an enclosed red dot. And um, if you've ever had to shoot in inclement weather, even a little bit of rain, it really can mess up open dots. So I've been trying to switch to closed emit emitters as much as I can. And so that's why I went with that on the platypus. Um, yeah, so as far as fit and finish, I am extremely impressed with this gun. Um, it's really hard for me to do now here with one hand, but I mean, there is like no frame to slide wiggle on here. Uh, yeah, there's absolutely no noise. Um, the staccato is, is very similar. I've shot this gun a lot more, so there is just the tiniest bit of flex, but still, you know, not, not really any noise, but there's just a little more movement, but you know, it's, it's probably like tens, ten thousandths of an inch or something. It's just the tiniest little bit. Um, so great. This one was built after they added all of their post 2024 shot show options. They added some new options this year, including a competition style trigger. <clears throat> so they tell you on the website to only order this trigger if you're going to use it in matches. And I legitimately am going to use it in matches. So I got the lightest trigger. It is just a hair lighter than my XL, but overall I, I'd, I'd call the triggers pretty even. They're, they're basically the same. Uh, the safety is very positive. You know, once it's on, it's not going off. Um, it is not ambi, but that is an option, but I'm right-handed. So I chose to just do the right-handed safety. Everything else on the gun is, uh, is pretty good. The Cerakoting is actually very good. It's very impressive. Of course, I chose to Cerakote parts like the hammer. Obviously the Cerakote on the hammer is going to wear. Um, that's, I know that going in, but you know, we'll maintain the look for as long as we can. Uh, I did a quick 200 round burn down on this gun this morning. Of course it worked fine. I uh, lubed the fuck out of it and just full sent, just sent it. Uh, I got 200 rounds in and then <clears throat> I had to go to work. <laughs> so uh, this gun has not been cleaned at all since I shot it today. So you can see there's probably some dirt and carbon and stuff. There's certainly oil um, because I did uh, lubricate it quite, um, quite heavily. The optic system on the platypus is pretty cool. So it comes with a plate installed that has a rear sight on it. So at first, when you take it off, you're like, oh no, I'm going to lose my rear sight. Except they thought of that. So even after you mount your optic, there is a secondary rear sight that it comes with that you can actually, um, you can mount up. And so it, it allows full co-witness even with the optic, which is pretty cool. Uh, high vis, you know, front sight again. That's I chose green. You can choose whatever color you want. Uh, I tend to not use my irons at all because I'm pretty dot focused, or rather target focused. But I'm used to shooting a dot these days. Uh, it's very similar setup on the XL, so you do retain your rear sight there. But they use a plate system, so that whole thing, honking thing, is on a plate, whereas the platypus is direct cut. Uh, so that is one less thing to fail. There is no plate in there. It is mounted directly to the frame, which I think personally is a bonus, but you know, your mileage may vary. So this optic is cut. Uh, it sits a little lower, 
which again I think is good, but you know it's um, that's up to you to decide. This thing is threaded. I'm probably never going to suppress it because again it's it's a competition gun, <clears throat> and as soon as you start suppressing any handgun, things get really dirty really fast and it gets fouled up and gummy and all that stuff. And I'm not really interested in that. Um, otherwise, you know, again, just only 200 rounds, so I can't really call it good, but it, there was no failures. All of the testing was done with my 147 grain round nose competition load. It makes something like between 130 and 135 power factor. So it's not exactly a, a puff load, but you know, I'm not making major either. It's a pretty middle of the road, nine mil road. Uh, no problems with feeding. Uh, all with Glock brand magazines. So I did not try any uh, P mags or anything like that. I have so many Glock mags that I'll, I will just use, uh, use Glock mags. And it's worth noting that it did come with two actual Glock brand Glock mags. It came with two 17 round Glock mags, which I thought was pretty cool because I just assumed it would come with the polymer P mags. I was just going to throw in a box, uh, but it came with usable Glock mags. So that's cool. Uh, with the Magwell, a standard 17 round uh, Glock 17 mag, it does fit obviously, but there's very little uh, play. It you know goes sort of flush, kind of disappears into the magwell. So I would recommend you know I'm just going to use these, the 33 rounders or the um, 24 round uh, Glock mags that they make now. Um, so that's cool. But that's why I did it. I think it is a really cool um, sort of a perfect pair in two gun with a PCC that takes Glock mags. And, uh, you know, just something to be different. Um, imagine losing to a guy shooting this. So, coming to a PCSL 2-gun match near you. Thanks for watching.